you know, since the conclusion of practice the other day, we've really been focused, you know, full time on the roster development, you know, working down through the 53 cuts as well as developing our practice squad. As the actual practice squad is finalized, we'll make sure we release that to you. I don't want to give you any information that isn't 100 percent. So we'll wait till that's finalized in a whole. Uh, I'd like to just go ahead and thank all the players that uh, that aren't going to be with the program at this point. Everybody we've had in the training camp did a tremendous job, showed a lot of urgency and effort. We really appreciate and respect every player who came through here. You know, to answer your question, yes, we're going to keep every player on a short list to bring back. We have a lot of respect for the guys who went through our program. Obviously, they know our system. And uh, in any year, let alone a year like this year, we're going to have to make sure we have guys in the fold that we know, we trust, and that know our system will be able to carry on in a short time period going forward. So on that note right here, I'll open it up to any questions you may have. Lombardo. Hey, Joe, how's it, how's it going? Good, Matt. What's going on, man? Hey, good. Um, two for you, if I may. Uh, first of all, I think some people might have been caught by surprise um, with Ryan Connolly being let go yesterday. Just some thoughts on what went into that decision. And then um, just your thoughts on the wide receiver depth, especially moving on from Corey Coleman today, given that none of the top three wide receivers played all 16 games last year. Well, you know, first off, we're pleased with the wide receiver depth we have. You know, I think we're going in right now with some speed at the position. That's something we're definitely we're looking to add right there. I think we have a good position flexibility with all of our skill players on offense. So we feel good where we're at right now. You know, look, it's the National Football League. You know, we're always looking to improve through our own roster development, developing our practice squad. And throughout the year, as different moves happen on different rosters, that could obviously impact our own roster as well. And then, you know, look, obviously with Ryan, we have a lot of respect for Ryan. He's a good football player. We had to make the decision ultimately that was best for us. We wish him good luck. If things worked out, you know, perfectly for us, we would have loved to have had him back on the practice squad. Uh, we didn't expect that to happen, to be honest with you, because you know, he's a good, accomplished player, and there's going to be a lot of teams in the league, you know, who are going to be looking to claim him. We wish him good luck in Minnesota, and uh, you know, look forward to seeing him play. Pat Leonard. Hey Joe, uh, what do you like about the three guys you claimed today? And um, separately, personally, for you. Has this been a tough couple of days for you delivering this news? And you said, you know, you wish you could have kept all these guys. You know, what's it been like for you? This is not a fun part of the business, Pat. This is a very tough time of year for every player and every coach. There's guys in the locker room who are, you know, seeing teammates walk out the door. There's coaches who invested a whole lot personally in players to develop them. The reality of this league is you can't keep everybody. And that's just the nature of the business. It's not an easy few days. They're not easy conversations. You want to make sure you give every player the, the direct truth on why the move was made, you know, what we think they can work on going forward to give themselves the best chance and really open up for any questions the players may have that, you know, you can always give them all the information necessary for them to improve in their craft. You know, in terms of the guys that we've added to the roster, you know, each one answers, you know, specific needs at that position group, uh, you know, really as far as establishing more depth and giving them some versatility within the position. So, we were able to add some speed at the skill position, safety and receiver, obviously, in the offensive line, gives some position flexibility with a long body with Jackson coming in here. So, you know, that'll be you know, some moves that we're going to work on getting these guys caught up to speed on our systems and our calls and our terminology. And, uh, look, it's our priority right now as coaches to get them going as fast as possible. Ralph? Hey, Joe. Um, I – there was, I was wondering if Ryan Connolly was a health-related decision for you guys, if he just didn't have enough time to get on the field. And also, are you concerned about your linebacker depth with him, obviously, and David Mayo is uh, hurt as well? Well, first off, I would say, you know, Ryan was obviously healthy, and he's healthy going into Minnesota, so we wish him the best of luck. You know, we feel good right now with our linebacker depth. You know, we have to get everybody on the roster developing all their positions and building our versatility at each spot. But right now we feel comfortable with where we're at, but we have to push to improve going forward. All right. Hey, Joe. Uh, just curious, uh, we didn't have a chance to talk to you since the trade became final, but what do you like in, uh, in Isaac Adam and, and how quickly can you get him up to speed to be a factor in the secondary? You know, he's been in here, you know, today already kind of talking through some different things, trying to get caught up to speed. He's got an iPad. He's got our playbook and availability. So, you know, we like the way he plays on the line of scrimmage. He's got some experience within the league. That goes a little bit of ways, but it's our job as coaches to get him caught up to our system as fast as possible. There won't be much carryover necessarily from the other system, but we try to keep as many of the techniques similar for him so he can carry over as fast as possible. But we like the energy and effort he plays with. We like the physicality he shows on the line of scrimmage. 
And obviously, this is a guy that we remember when he came out of college not too long ago in the draft. So we've known about these guys in the league for a while, Art. I was going to say, just just with you being up in New England at the time when he was at BC, did you – were you familiar with him up there, maybe even more so than you would have been normally for, for a guy who's out there? I don't know more so just because of the location of the two programs, uh, but I was familiar with him coming out, absolutely. Thanks. Tom Rock. I actually wanted to follow up on those cornerbacks, Joe. Um, I mean, can Yadam get up to speed enough to, to possibly start for you on, on Monday night? We'll have to wait and see. I can't answer that right now, but we're definitely going to give him all the information we can and make sure that we put him in position to play to his strengths, Tom. Do you feel like you've answered the question? You know, you, you've kind of had this question since – uh, since May, right? Who's gonna Who's gonna replace DeAndre Baker? Do you feel like you feel like you've answered that question with this roster? Well, we're gonna see. You know, right now we're looking to play as many of our players as possible at those positions, keep them fresh and rotate. You know, and listen. One thing we haven't had yet is a preseason game or a regular season game, obviously. So we're gonna make sure we use all of our guys and roll them on through, and we'll see. You know, who performs the best. You know, whoever the hot hand is, we may go with. But we're gonna make sure we keep rolling them on through and building in the experience of the group as a whole. Thank you. We have time for three more, Schwartz, Duggan, and Jordan. Schwartz. Hey, Joe. Hey, Paul. Um, you talked about the unpleasantness of what this situation is like for a head coach, you know, telling players they're gone, you know, all that other thing. Um, can you fast forward a little bit to tomorrow when you get your team on the field for the first time? It'll be, the you know, the 53 and the practice squad guys. And will that be a moment where you look around and kind of think, all right, now we're on to the next phase here. This is the team getting ready to play the Steelers. Well, I think there's just a natural transition, Paul, from going from training camp into regular season week one. So tomorrow really for us will be, you know, about an hour and a half on the grass, moving around. They've had several days off in a row. we got to knock the rust off them, you know, have them break a sweat, get some conditioning in, work on some fundamentals and specifics for us as a team. I don't really ever go into any one day and look at everything as a defining moment in the season. I think it's just a natural transition. We have to change the way we think and the way we prepare from preseason now in a regular season where we have a defined opponent to work against. So the playbook is not a general overview of install. It's specific towards an opponent and how we're going to play, you know, next Monday. Thank you. Dougie. Hey, Joe. I know when we spoke, uh, you know, about the possibility of you know, quarantining a quarterback, whatever you want to call it, it was a hypothetical. But now that we're here, what do you plan to do with Cooper? I mean, is he going to just be part of the quarterback room, be part of practice, or do you do something uh, to keep him separate? Yeah, at this moment in time, we're going to keep him in the building, working with the team. We've discussed all those hypotheticals. I think the one thing we have a lot of confidence in right now are the protocols we have in place. The daily testing has been effective for not only us, but as the league as a whole. So we're going to make sure that we just keep the discipline of what we're doing on a daily basis. But this is a guy we want to keep within the program, keep developing, keep involved in the game plans, you know, and keep progressing our team as a whole. Last question here, Jordan. Hey, Joe, I was actually going to ask about the quarterback quarantine also, but I'll, I'll uh, make a little sharp U-turn. And like, People look, might look at it from a distance and say, oh, Ryan Connolly, he was a last-year draft pick. You know, this is now Joe's team. He, you know, he, he's, he's the one you know, driving this and, and making these decisions and making it his roster. So I just want to know, what, what, should, what do you feel about that, about this being your roster now? Or at least, you know, and by that, I don't mean like you're making decisions on your own, but I mean just like sort of molding it to what you're looking for in, in players and specifically, you know, talent-wise and, and uh, ability. You know, look, all the players that we kept on our 53 and our practice squad are guys that we think give us versatility and have the ability to develop and keep shaping this roster in a positive way. You know, really, this is our team. This is New York Giants team. So we look at this, everyone in here is in it together, every coach, every player, every personnel. So we're pleased with the players we have. And again, it's the National Football League. We're always looking to sharpen and develop. And there's natural attrition throughout the year, so we have to be aware of everyone else who's involved in the league on transaction moves.